to History Times. I'm Jack Jones, your presenter today, where we'll be talking about St. Nicholas, the Mother Church of Brighton, and its churchyard. Now let's talk about some history about St. Nicholas Church, the Mother Church of Brighton. Oh, hi! The first historical dating of St. Nicholas, the Mother Church of Brighton, was recorded in the Doomsday Book, worth 12 pounds! That's before the pre-credit crunch. However, the only structural evidence of this is some Norman building blocks in the tower. However, we can't actually look at these Norman building blocks because that's trespassing. However, these Norman building blocks do not date back to the Doomsday Book times. It actually dates back to the 14th century. As you can see, the experts on the church do agree with me on this matter. You are alive. <laughs> Thank you! However, the large majority of the church has been reconstructed. For example, the ten bells in the tower were originally from 1777. However, we were recast in 1922. My love is a fever, longing for that which longer nurses the disease. Quick fact when the Duke of Wellington was being tutored here in Bright Helmstone, he worshipped at St. Nicholas, the Mother Church of Brighton. On June 6, 1853, the enlargement of the church had been commenced by a man called Robert Cromwell. Not the Oliver Cromwell, who won that really important civil war against Charles I, of course, though. This virtually rebuilt the church, and the extra additions were, in 1872, a new organ was installed from the 1815 organ. In 1877, a chair vestry and northern approach was added. And in 1892, a north vestry and a clerestorial roof was also added. As you can see, the original church was a lot smaller. You may think the stained glass is quite old, but actually it was only made in 1880 by a man called Charles Kemp, a famous stained glass maker apparently. You may think that this is the only part of the churchyard. However, originally this road wasn't here, and that was part of the churchyard, and that bit over there, where now there's the children's playground. This road was built in the 20th century. As you can see, the playground here replaced many of the tombs. Now, the tombs were either removed or moved, such as here. As can be told, archaeological surveying here is quite impossible due to the fact of the children's playground, which is owned by the council. However, the other cut-off bit from the old churchyard is practically intact. As you can see, it even still has some tombs. However, we can't actually go inside the tombs. Pretty, pretty hard, and it's not night time yet. Let's have a look, shall we? So, have a look. However, archaeological surveying, or even digging up, it is practically impractical due to the fact that there are a lot of residential area around here and it's quite near the town centre. So a lot of disruption, noise, would annoy quite a lot of people. God, oh my god, look at this amazing town of events. I didn't even know about this. This bit has been re-edited. There used to be huge walls on both sides, kind of like an archway, but now it's been removed. I don't know why they've done this. Maybe. Maybe there is some archaeological surveying being here. Maybe an archaeological investigation is actually happening.
quick story. A devastating attack from abroad did occur in June 1514 when French raiders attacked Bright Helmstone. The surrounding village had been destroyed except St. Nicholas Church, Mother Church of Brighton, due to the fact of it being on a large hill. Many think that it being on this small slash large hill, whatever you want to really call it, is for tactical reasons and a place of, you know, saving. Yeah, yeah. By the footpath, you can see near to Diet Road is the stump of a medieval cross on an octagonal base. It was probably destroyed, the original one that is, at the time of the Commonwealth in the 17th century. However, a new shaft was erected in 1934, which, as you can see, has been oftenly vandalized. As you can see, I was actually kidding about the last one. This is actually the octagonal based medieval cross recreation next to the footpath near Dyke Road, that way. The other one was just a normal tree stump. <laughs> I hate my life. Now for some legendary dead people. Martha Gunn was a famous dipper. That's it. What's a dipper? Oh, a dipper is someone who used to dip people in the sea. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty true. Why would I lie? Phoebe Hessel was a private in the army of the Great British Empire for a good portion of her life. She died December 12th, 1821. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to you, but she pretended to be a man for over a decade and was never found out, even though she was wounded at one point and treated, which makes you question, what was wrong with the doctor? It's <laughs> another famous person. Look, it could be Nicholas Tedesel, the man I've been looking for for all this time. He helped Charles II escape capture. I don't know if it is, though. No, it isn't. <sighs> Sorry, um, I've been desperate to find a man called Nicholas Tedesel, the man who helped Charles II escape capture. And, uh... Sorry. One final note on the archaeological investigation of St. Nicholas Church, the Mother Church of Brighton, is that in 2009, the oldest man in Britain, Henry Allingham, also one of the, or also the last surviving member of the RAF, or the, in, the creation of the RAF, had his funeral here. Well, I hope you enjoyed history time. I sure did. Did you, cameraman? No. Well, that's upsetting. Signing out. Grass. Can I say something? Uh, uh, hello, St. Nicholas, I'm drunk. Gravestones. Grass. Did you know the Duke of Wellington was... <laughs> Yeah, looking at it myself as uh, the beginning, really, of, a, of an exploration. On June 6, 1853, an enlargement of the church had been started by a man called Robert, Robert Cromer. Like Not the guy Oliver Cromer, the one that really imported Civil War or anything. Light when you get and the <laughs> <laughs> However, the other churchyard that is left... However, the other part of the old churchyard that has been cut off is practically completely left in contact. Yeah, yeah. However, the other part of the... Why can't I say this? Uh... Quick story! A devastating attack did occur from abroad in Quick story, a devastating attack that came from abroad back in June 1514 was from the cross used to maybe been here on the octagonal base. Octagonal. Fuck off. Redo that.
One final note on this small archaeological investigation of St. Nicholas Church, the mother church of Brighton, is the fact that in 2009, the man Henry Allingham, one of the oldest men in Britain, not one of the oldest, but... Good?